Hello, welcome back in to another episode of Dr. Darnese's House of Religion, Magic, and Conjure. Hope you're doing well out there. I know these are trying and interesting times. Um, but par that's part of what I want to talk about today in terms of how we might understand this on a more um, a broader, more metaphysical level. But I'm going to start uh, by talking about... Uh, some metaphysical concepts of, of channeling, of um, more advanced metaphysics. And I'm going to start this conversation, because I imagine it'll be multiple videos, by looking at this phenomenon on, of, of who is a guru. And essentially, where are the black gurus? Are there no black gurus? <laughs> you know, if you, if you think about or even you're acquainted with this kind of um, religious inquiry, spiritual inquiry, you know, you can think of some people who are Indian or white people, white Americans or white Europeans, doesn't matter. But the people who seem to rise up in this movement to be recognized as spiritual leaders, to be recognized as a guru, they're, we don't really see black people in Africa or in the United States. Now there's one exception who I can think of, and maybe you can think of some other people as well. And if so, certainly comment. I'll be fascinated to know who they are. But um, the one guru I can think of, his name is Muji. And um, if you've never heard of him, it's M-O-O-J-I. And he is Jamaican and Chinese. And uh, yeah, so, so he's one African descent person I can think of, and he uh, travels the world, I guess, and he he's sometimes in Portugal, sometimes in India, sometimes in Jamaica. But I would not say that he has attained the level of status as, you know, some of the Indian, like Sadhguru, or some of the, you know, from history, Ramakrishna, you know, like that tradition of Indian gurus has been accepted worldwide, particularly by uh, white people. That's a very Indian thing, right? Eastern European, uh, Eastern, uh, Eastern spirituality. So the Buddhists, the Hindus, they are accorded a certain amount of spiritual authority and legitimacy. And then there are the white people, you know, some of whom actually go to India and get an Indian name and they start, you know, dressing um, in the garb of an Indian guru, right? Like the white headdress or clothes or certain kinds of prayer beads. And okay, you know, I'm not really knocking somebody else's spiritual path. But what I'm saying is it can't be that there are no black gurus, right? <laughs> so... I'm acknowledging that there are, you know, there are black spiritual teachers out here, but for whatever reason, we've been erased from certain environments. So you go to conferences, I don't know if you go to conferences, but I, you know, spend time in spiritual and metaphysical spaces. And there are really not that many black people. So, in fact, when there are, we kind of like, you know, what you do when you're in an environment where there's not that many black people and you, you know, nod and at some point you go over and talk to them and say, wow, it's not usually that many of us here. Why is that? What are black people doing in terms of spirituality? And I'm not, I'm not talking about, obviously, I think it's obvious. I'm not talking about church membership. You know, black people are certainly present in these Christian churches um, and even in um, mosques you can find a significant number of black people. But these more metaphysical spiritual spaces where people say that they're doing, um, you know, spirituality outside the bounds of religion. And so um, that's what I'm wanting to talk about is, for example, channelers. So those people who are renowned, well-known as channelers, and I'll say, you know, reputable channelers. Although if you're not familiar, familiar with channeling or you haven't paid much attention to channeling, you might say, well, I don't know if any of them are reputable. But, you know, that might be your personal opinion about it. But, but there are some who definitely have crafted a space for themselves as being legitimate. And so, you know, it's just going to kind of run down 
um, so I'm doing two things really talking about the fact that there's no real black people in that space but I'm also wanting to talk about um, the ones who are and what their messages are so I guess I'll start with uh, the most popular one right now across the board would be Abraham Hicks would be Esther Hicks she channels Abraham um, before before Abraham, before Esther and Abraham, there was the Seth material. So there was Jane Roberts, who channeled Seth. And that was relatively popular, I'll say in the late 60s and through the 70s. If you're not familiar with the Seth material, all you have to do is Google or YouTube search Seth material. Jane Roberts, Seth. And prepare to have your mind blown. <laughs> if you've never listened to channel material before, you know, you may just say, wow, I don't even know what this is. But trust what I say that there is a, a certain continuity of a message that's coming down to us from the non-physical realm. From the non-physical realm of being. These channelers speak to us about the nature of reality. I mean, the true nature of reality, right? When we say metaphysical, we mean going beyond the physical. So it's beyond anything that we encounter through our physical senses. And it's beyond anything that the traditional religions teach us in any traditional way, right? So when I say a non-physical entity, then I'm talking about those uh, those souls who are more evolved not because they are really separate from us but because they have evolved and we as human beings are also on that path of evolution so if you can hang with me here we're going to get a little deep in the woods here or vast in the cosmos we're going vast in the cosmos today we as human beings are having an experience, a very, a very specific kind of experience as humans in this third density kind of environment in which we find ourselves and shifting into the fourth density right now. So these channelers have been around telling us about the nature of the cosmos, the nature of the universe, the nature of the human being. The human being is really a spiritual being having a human experience, right? So this environment in which we play is really very narrow, very much a game, one might say. And it's a game that the one creator is playing, right? So these channelers all come and tell us this in various ways. There's one creative source. Even though the different kind of religions will say, you know, well, we have, you know, especially African traditional spiritualities, we, there's a there's a pantheon, right? There's a number of gods that are associated with different things, the um, Orisha or the Loa, the Indian pantheon, right? A, a god with an elephant head, Ganesh, you know, and God with multiple arms and hands. Well, because the understanding behind that is there really is not multiple. There's, there aren't really multiple gods. God is just represented that way. There's really just the one creator. And that's really the most spiritual of all teachings. There's only one. There's really only one being. And we are all fractals of it. We are all parts of it. We are all um, playing this sort of game of descending and ascending descending out of the phys out of the spiritual descending into the into the material and then we will ascend once again so it's really just sort of a game that the creator is playing right what it would be like to be in physical form the creator says oh what would it be like to be a little bit above that creator what about the and so it's a it's sort of an expansion right of the creator having all of these experiences so these channelers come along and they tell us about that and again if this is like I don't know what you're talking about you can tell you can give me a comment about that and I'll do some more videos to explain what is really the nature of the human of human evolution 
I should, I could rephrase that or say at the same time, not just human evolution, but soul evolution, because it's really soul evolution. The human experience is one aspect of our soul's evolution, only one aspect of our soul's evolution and the physical we reincarnate. We just keep reincarnating in the physical until we're ready to go up into the next grade, the next level of our cosmic, non-physical, more spiritualized experience. I think I will do that other video on the different densities, the one, the, the uh, densities one through eight, to talk about what kind of beings exist on the different densities. We are, as I said, third D going into the fourth D. We pretty much are making that shift into the fourth dimension or density, which is why our world seems to be coming undone. Indeed, it is coming undone because it's a th third density kind of reality that can no longer be held together. It's no longer a vibrational match to where we're going. The earth itself started making this transition in 2012. The earth itself is already fourth density. So as those of us who live on the earth are going to, but it's a really hard transition for a lot of people. So, you know, you might hear things, talk about things, hear people talking about um, ascending or the shift, spiritual awakening, people's consciousness is expanding, which is what I always say, right? We are here at this time to experience the awakening of humanity, the expansion of consciousness. That's what we're living in right now. And it can seem really scary because there's so much uncertainty. We're like, we don't, we've never been in this space before. We have no idea what's going to happen. And so we're worried about very specific material things that, you know, is natural to human beings to be worried about in a way, you know, how am I, am I going to, how am I going to take care of myself? Right. So we're worried about jobs. People are worried about their incomes and, you know, being able to pay their bills and survive. So that's natural to the third density and to the human embodied being that we are. But where we're going, we need a whole different system. And when I say going, we're not really it's not like we're all going to like die and then wake up in a spiritualized body. We are just shifting into another way of being as we see our planet and our societies doing it right in front of our eyes right now. It's happening right in front of our eyes. Look, our planet is restoring itself while we've been inside on punishment. She put us on punishment, right? So the planet is restoring herself. Our systems are failing and new ones will have to be created. There's no such thing as going back to normal. That is done. So please understand expand your own consciousness and say well what are we going to have then what will life be like it's going to be different from now on it is going to represent a different way of being the old can't come that's what's happening right now the old can't come some of you may find your some of your relationships can't survive either the relationships can't survive I meaning you have to let some people go or they might let you go because it's not the kind of place that, it's not a kind of union that can vibrationally hold together. Anyway, I said we're going deep, right? We're going deep. And I'm really just giving you a little fumble, thimbleful, a little thimbleful right now. Because uh, really I wanted to talk more about these channelers. So the channelers are, have been giving us little bits and pieces of this all along. What is the nature of reality? What is our cosmos like? What is the meaning of life? Um, what are we as human beings supposed to be doing here? Is there good and evil? Um, what, what is it all about? What happens when we die? Right? Religion since time and memorial have been trying to answer the questions. Who are we? What is the meaning of life? And what happens when we die? So these channelers have been coming in since the beginning of time, really. But just in our recent history, I'm just talking about our recent history since the 1960s to the present. So again, I said like the mid to late 60s, we saw Seth, this non-physical entity, be channeled through Jane Roberts. And he dropped the bomb that said, you are the creator of your own reality. You are the creator of your own reality. And that was so mind-boggling in 1968 
that people said, oh, she's crazy. She's possessed by a demon. Something is wrong with her. And if you look at that old footage, it's very black and white, grainy. And um, it will look a little creepy, I think, from our perspective. It almost looks like an old horror movie or something. But it's the technology of the time, right? And, the, and how old it is. So you can, you know, acquaint yourself with the Seth material. You don't even have to look at her. It's been on audio tape. You can listen to the whole, I think it's 10 hours long, um, the various audio versions of the Seth material. Then we get to Abraham. Abraham Hicks. Again, a combination of Esther Hicks, who is the channel, and Abraham. And Abraham takes the teaching to say, you are the creator of your own reality, and here's how your emotional, uh, your emotions help you know if you're on track or not in terms of what you want to manifest. So, so Abraham started talking to us about how to manifest the things that you want, how to have a life that you like, that you enjoy, a life that feels good to you. Abraham is very much about soothing. Great stuff. I love Abraham. Channeled by Esther Hicks, white woman. Jane Roberts, white woman. Um, and the audiences, largely white. Okay. Then we move into Bashar, an entity named Bashar, channeled through um, Daryl Anka, white man. Again, since the 70s to the present, you can you know, search for Bashar. I have to say about Bashar, you won't find that many long form videos from Daryl Anka who channels Bashar because Daryl Anka has his own website and he wants to uh, have people come to his website for the material. So there's really just short uh, snippets of Bashar from different conferences that he does, his own workshops, um, primarily, I was gonna say all over the country, but not so much, just mostly the Western United States. But Bashar gives us a teaching about the nature of the universe and how to make it applicable to where we are now. But he's a little bit more, these are like grades, as I, as I see it, as I understand it, it's like grades. You can, you start at one level and you learn a little more, you learn a little more, your consciousness expands so you can accept more ideas, so you can go more out there, so to speak. So Bashar starts telling us about the different kinds of beings that are in the universes and that there are parallel realities and that all is happening at the same time. There is no past, there is no future, there are no past lives, there are no future lives, it's all now. There are just multiple realities, simultaneous multiple realities. There is no past and there is no future. There's only now and everything is happening now. Bashar teaches us about that and how to, again, manifest, but not just by sitting down and, man uh, and meditating on what you want or writing it down a hundred times, Though those things can be helpful because they focus your mind, as I always teach. You want to focus your mind so you focus your energy. But Bashar says, let me explain to you the mechanism of the universe so you know what you're doing. Right? It's more like, I know you know how to work a light switch, but I'm going to also tell you something about electricity so you don't hurt yourself. Right? So Bashar gives us more of that, but he mixes it. You know, he still has people, you know, going up to the microphone at the workshops and saying, how do I do this or how do I do that? And pretty much his answer is the same. Follow your highest excitement. Follow your highest excitement because that is the news that you get from your own higher self. It'll always lead you in the right direction. All right, so that's Bashar. Let me move on to Cryon. Cryon is an entity channeled by Lee Carroll, white man. And I suppose they started in the late 70s as well. And it's totally about the nature of the universe. What is the nature of this universe? It is vibrational. It is magnetic. It is um, electrical. It is quantum. Again, with the, the quantum meaning all is now. There is no past, future, nothing. It's all now. It's all now. And so to wrap your mind around that means that you have to understand quantum physics to some degree, right? You don't have to be a physicist, but you have to be able to sort of wrap your mind around these things. Bashar will say, he'll explain something and he'll say, it's simple physics. Well, physics was never simple to me. But, you know, he'll say that to people like, I'm explaining this to you. Do you not get it, right? It's simple physics. And then Cryon expands it even more and says... No, I'm not going to just tell you about how electricity works through your house. I'm going to talk to you about the nature of electricity. 
<laughs> and the magnetic field and the field of all possibilities. I'm going to talk to you more about the creator. The creator that you call God is much bigger than any religion could ever tell you. The creator is beyond any human form. The creator is actually no thing. The creator is no thing. So anyway, we could go on. Um, but my point is, I'd really like to see more black people in these spaces. Whether or not we become the guru or the main teacher, but where are we? Because we'll get erased. You know, I talk about that quite a bit. Like Western civilization tends to erase things that are not of the West. Certain things like Asian culture, they can't entirely erase because they've got written record. But something like African traditional spiritualities can easily be erased because there's not so much of a written record. That's not what African people valued, right? So where they start picking up the non, the, the African uh, non-Western, they pick it up through, through Egypt. Then they think, oh, this is Egypt and this is a, you know, not African, not African and not black civilization. But we know Egypt was, all, by the time the Europeans find Egypt, um, it's already in a certain kind of decline and, it, and it's and it's a mixed race that mixed races that start to happen in Egypt around 300 or so BCE that's when the, it, it becomes more of a multicultural kind of environment prior to that it's the African it's the African well the African had been along for 3,000 or 4,000 years before that and had already done this you know civilizations rise and fall but when there's no historical record um, no written historical record, then Western civilization just tends to overlook and therefore erase. So what I'm saying is I don't want us to be erased from the development, the further development of our of, a, of spirituality. I mean, this is my life's work, right? I mean, I'm a religion professor. That's one very narrow 3D kind of um, manifestation of what I do. But we're moving beyond that now. It's the name of my book, Beyond Christianity. We're beyond those kind of very narrow understandings of, of, of religion. And we're more, we've moved more into a fourth density understanding of spirituality and our place in the entire cosmos. This human experience is very short. It's a very short, third density is very short and it's now over. Third density is now over. Not to say, I was going to say, since so it's over, right? So we're already moving, and the nature of my teachings are moving, are transforming, are evolving. And I just want to invite us in to be mindful of those spaces where we haven't been. And for us not to be afraid to go there, not for us to think that it's only for others, um, but for us to go in and make our mark as well. I'm going to do a couple more videos about, about this topic, but also some African and African-American people who have, in fact, been doing this type of thing, but they haven't gotten, they haven't uh, been recognized on any large scale. So there are definitely some black people who have been involved in the spiritualist movement, who were mediums, um, who were doing all levels of, of spiritual practice. But again, they didn't get a platform. They weren't, you know, selling out Col not coliseums, but auditoriums. They were not featured on Oprah, right? They weren't that level, but they were there. And I want us to know, if, if no one else, I want us to know and continue, right? Continue their lineage, not be hesitant. Don't hold back when you're the odd one in the room because you're not practicing the traditional religions and you know about stuff like this, you know about channelers. So anyway, leave me a comment and let me know if you know about these channelers or who are your favorite ones or what your questions might be. Um, I also left out A Course in Miracles. Some of y'all might be familiar with A Course in Miracles as a, a channel material. And if you're really curious, you know, of course you can just Google and search on YouTube and let me tell you, your mind will be blown. All right, that's it for now. It's a long video, y'all, but um, I want to come back and do some more of these kind of teachings so that we are not erased. All right, oh, like, share, subscribe. Join me on Patreon, because I'll be, especially in Patreon, I'll be doing more of these long-form videos about these specific things. All right, so that's it. Bye for now.